Well, today, y'all, we are going to riff on a couple different topics. We kind of wanted to do a little like Q&A training episode. We also just briefly want to plug, we will have a new apparel drop. We've kind of taken a little bit of a hiatus on apparel. So been a couple of months. So we will have new apparel for Life is Better Strong, Paragon Training Methods, Um, We will have all that stuff available from May 22nd to May 28th. So basically Sunday to Sunday. Uh, As always, those are one of those like, if you sleep on it, you ain't getting it. So (laughs) get it in, get those orders in. So those will be going live. Um, In addition to, we will be starting brand new hypertrophy cycles at Paragon on May 22nd. So we will basically, we have seven weeks of hypertrophy and then we'll be back to a strength cycle. We'll be ripping all the heavy weights. So just kind of setting the stage for uh, what the next couple months are looking like at Paragon. But um, our goal today is can we kind of riff for say like 5, 10, 15 minutes on each of these topics and like kind of hit a variety of things rather than just like go and deep dive on um, something for a long time. So The first question that we have been, this has been like a repeat question on social media for Paragon members, in DMs, all that stuff. But the question would basically be, how do you pick the right weight when lifting? Like, how do you know how heavy you should be lifting? What weight you're picking? How do we help people be training hard enough. And maybe if you even want to talk about that study that Stronger by Science and Greg Knuckles just put out um, recently, I think that would be like a bomb, bomb question for you. Oh, yeah, yeah. So the short answer to picking the right weight is that you follow the desired reps from failure for the rep range that you're targeting. Um, And so in layman speak, that essentially means, right, we have a rep range, maybe that rep range is eight to 12. And then there might be something next to it that says about two to three reps from failure. And so your goal would be to complete somewhere in the eight to 12 rep range and also feel like you could probably have done two more reps if you had to. Um, However, the rep range is much less important than the proper reps from failure. Because in Paragon, the way that we design our programming across a six or seven week hypertrophy phase is to progress the effort slightly week to week. And so in at some level, it doesn't really matter whether you get it right on the first try, because if you are too light and it's too easy, then you're just going to add weight the next week or the next set. And if it's too heavy, then essentially what you do is you just stop your set early. So, you know, say you get to six reps and you're like, oh, that feels to me like two reps from failure. Then you just don't go to eight because matching the Mm. target reps from failure is going to be significantly more important than than whether you hit the precise rep range or not. So uh, any... Kind of thoughts. I didn't know that. that actually. I thought I thought uh, you know you you the rep range was more important, but that's actually really good insight about like the the reps and reserve is actually more important. Yeah. So when you look at the predominance of studies across um, anything looking at hypertrophy these days, uh, anything between five or six and thirty reps seems to produce relatively equivalent hypertrophy uh, set for set assuming that you're taking them to the same reps from failure. Mm -hmm. Um, So this sort of aligns with the effective reps model, which essentially states that it's the last five reps before failure that really have the most impact on your hypertrophy. And, And there's certainly some holes in this theory, so I wouldn't like take that to the grave with you. But if you look at it that way, you know, you do a 30 rep set, it's sets 25 to 30 that are going to produce the most hypertrophy. And then you're doing set reps one to 24 just to get to 25 to 30. Um, Whereas if you're doing a set of six, you pretty much know that from the first rep on that that's pretty hard and you're like in it, right? You're like, I need to stay focused. Every rep matters here. And so uh, if we're targeting two to three reps from failure, then yeah, I mean, if you're hitting five reps with two reps from failure, so you could have done seven, or you're doing 25 reps and you could have done 27, um, it's more or less mm-hmm. the same stimulus to your body. So you wouldn't, would you go, you wouldn't go down, like for example, if you hit six reps and that was two reps from failure, um, you wouldn't go down the next set, you would just keep that weight and still do six or what would you... 
Uh, if it was me, that's what I would do because I personally love lower rep ranges, mm. but there's absolutely nothing wrong with looking at it and being like, oh crap, I got six reps and it says eight to 12. So on my next set, I'll knock 15% off mm. and then I'll just use that weight. And when I get to the point where I feel like I'm two reps from failure, that's where I'll stop that set. Um, and on the other side, it works too. Like if you pick a weight and you're going and you're like 10, 11, <laughs> 12. Oh crap. I still have like six more in me. Like don't stop just cause you're at 12. Like go to the point where you have two or three reps from failure, if that's 15 or 16 or whatever it is. Um, and then that gives you a realistic sense of kind of how you need to adjust the weight the next time. Cause if you just stop at 12 and you're like, I think I had six reps from failure, like who knows six reps from failure could be 12 reps from failure. Right. So um, so I think going to the point of the, the target reps from failure then gives you a more accurate assessment of what type of weight to increase or decrease on the following set. 